And now part four of the Nebula build. This thing is coming together. Let's get some more work done. So I just finished unwrapping the cling wrap on this thing and we're getting ready to cut some elements. Uh, I'm going to, I was going to use the, the, that magnet on the vise, but instead I'm just going to put this pipe on the vise. Just give it a little snugness there, you know, just click. And uh, I'm just going to use that to spool it off. Um, as you might expect, it's been said a thousand times before, this cable is really, really nice. So I'll cut my elements and I'll come back some more. Okay, I have all my elements cut. My check boxes are ticked. It's now time to prep them for putting terminals. So since I don't want to be feeding heat shrink well, after the fact, I'm going to go ahead and cut it and fit it now. Uh, close enough for going work, right? I should get my flush cutters. Hang on. Having the right tool for the job and not using it is just foolish. And I need to cut a couple more pieces because I have one, two, three, four, five, six elements. Okay. And I have four pieces of heat shrink. So let's cut a couple more. Okay. So I cut them and stacked them in the order I cut them. And I cut them from 80 down to 17. So the 17 is on top. So this is going to be the first one I finish. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and trim up this uh, sheeting here. Uh, I'm going to guess a 16 gauge maybe. Uh, it may be 18, but the 16 did the trick. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little more sheath off here. And then double it up to make it a little bit more uh, fitting of that connector. It's a little easier to, uh, to solder that on when there's more wire in the in the loop. One down, five to go. So I have all my elements cut and four terminals put on them and soldered. So I'm going to prep the heat shrink. I should say the first layer of heat shrink. I'm going to put multiple layers of heat shrink on here. I'll explain here in a second. All right. So I'm just getting it all butted up against the fork a little bit past because, you know, and it's in its same. It's going to shrink once you get some heat on it. And since I don't want that join to be exposed, I'm going a little bit beyond. So, you know, our normal instinct would be to like, you know, just put it there and then it shrinks and ends up here, right? So I go beyond it a bit. And then when it shrinks, it ends up where I want it to be. The other side of it is that, oh, I suppose I should explain this now because it's the last one I've <laughs> already. So the solder joint, there isn't much on there, right? And this is a kind of a, it's a 12 to 10 gauge connector and this is like 18 gauge wire so there's a big gap there in the step and i'm afraid it's going to become an issue over time right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to heat shrink it with the stuff that cal sends this right and then i have a bunch of other uh, sh heat shrink that i have in my kit and i'm just going to get a couple more layers on at least one maybe two more layers on to build this up with more strain relief so that, you know, that gets less of an issue over time. You see how it pulled back a bit? I'm actually holding it with my thumb to keep it from sliding. And now it's starting to shrink to the point where my thumb is not connected to it at all. So the only thing that Cal doesn't provide with the kit are guying stakes or guying rods. Um, how about this for a guying stake? Uh, local hazard fraught. Um, I want to say they were 350 or four bucks, something like that. They're pet, you know, they're for you to put your pet on, but has a ring there. I can use that or I can use the top of the triangle here to anchor the, uh, the guy point in. Five meters out, so I'm going to start it here and, you know, the, the thing I like about this is that since it's a corkscrew, it's harder for, the, for it to pull out of the ground. So 
we end up with a sturdy anchor point that's less likely to get yanked. The outside is ready for the antenna. I have the stake that I used to keep my ground radials sort of centered. It's just general idea, but that's going to be the expected center of the antenna mast. Off to one side, I have a guiding uh, stake over there. About 120 degrees off, I have another uh, uh, guide stake over there. Same thing over there. And I have my two horse, two saw horses out. So next is going to be getting this uh, mast out, getting it pulled uh, to length and secured. All right, so I have my lovely assistant helping me out, and we're going to extend this mast. And there you go, right there. That's the next section. So, okay, you're going to pull. I'm going to pull. We're both going to twist. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Let's do it again. No, no, in the next section. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Oh, we forgot to say click. Oh, well. If we don't say click, there's not enough torque on it. Okay, well. All right, you, right there. You'll make sure to do it on the next one. Okay, ready? One, two, three, pull. Turn it. Click! See, that one, that one's locked in bright. We're going to have to do the other ones again. Okay, well, your next assistant can help you with that. Okay, smarty pants. All right, pull and twist. Ready? One, two, three. More, 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 more. <clears throat> okay, that's good. Okay, that's just bubbling paint, not a big deal. Okay, ready? One, two, three, pull. There we go. And so on. Well, there she goes. Cal's documentation says between 17.6 and 18 meters. I got 17.10 out of it. And it's probably because the wife and I are not putting enough umph into it. Um, for now, this will do because uh, we're both getting over the Rona. So we don't have all the umph we normally would normally have. So this will do. So I have the driven. And then the rest of the spreader plates are installed. Next, I'm going to, by the way, some of these are actually right on the line. So next, I'm going to get some electrical tape and wrap all of these uh, to seal them up. And then I'm also going to go in back inside of the garage and prepare the hose clamps that are going to go on the top side of the plate to keep the plate down. On to prepping the hose clamps. I'm gonna, yeah, that's the wrong way, undo this. I'm going to measure this tubing so that it goes into it. So we're gonna go most of the way through and cut it there. And I don't imagine that this is a critical measurement by any ways. So we're just gonna, hmm, I need to put a new blade on this thing. Says the guy doesn't want to get cut with a dull knife. Says the guy doesn't want to get cut, period. But if I've learned anything over the years, and it's that a dull knife is more likely to mess you up. Sharp knife is easy to stitch. So we got to make a little bit of a channel for uh, the uh, adjustment head. So I'm using the snips for this. I imagine I can use the. Uh, utility knife but again I haven't I can tell you that it needs a new blade I'm only gonna shoot this uh, once so I'm not gonna stop to shoot just to go get a new blade besides this is really easy with the snips let me actually do the rest of this with the snips since that's where I made the channel that's the way I'm gonna orient this it takes a little bit of a finagling here I can tell the uh, tip of the hose clamp is digging into the rubber on the other side. Did I cut this too long? Might have. Not sure how good this is or how bad this is for the health of the hose clamp, but I just straightened it out better in the hopes that it helps get this through there. There we go. And one hose clamp done. And a bunch more to go. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of them, but you get the gist of it.
So of course I forgot that I'm supposed to wrap these around the mast and not slide them down. So I did them inside. I'll have to get get to undo them outside. So we can prop this in such a way that I can work and show you what I'm doing at the same time. Yeah. I don't need to do it there. I just need to tighten it there. The instructions are pretty clear. Don't over tighten. Okay, so let's see. I got a hold of it now. I'm going to put this opposite of the flying lead. So, so anyhow, hose clamp for every one of these uh, plates and uh, then a couple more and uh, call it electrical tape at all the at all the junctions to keep the uh, let's see that's still kind of loose yep need to tighten it up some more that is snug not going anywhere so I'm gonna go uh, you know the, te the technical uh, application I believe is going uh, click torqued in Okay, so without question, the most aggravating part of this entire build so far has been these stupid hose clamps. They are impossible, well, not, not impossible, obviously, but they're difficult. Um, one of them was just so t snug that I just couldn't make it work. So it happens that I had one in my toolbox. Uh, I had some extra aquarium tubing and some excess from uh, what supplied with the antenna so I went ahead and made you know this one work but uh, otherwise everything else so far so good knock on wood all right gang that was part four stay tuned for part five coming soon part five yeah I know a lot of parts to this right see you all in the next one seven three